And joining me now is the head honcho of Terrificon, the big kahuna of conventions, the king of the nerds, the boss Grissom, if you will, of the best comic book show in town, Mitch Halleck. Mitch, welcome back to Comic Book Central. How are you doing, buddy? Boss Grissom? I was just going to say it took me a minute. I'm thinking Boss Nass, but then I went, no, no. Joe, you comic book? are my number one guy. <laughs> That's Boss Grissom. It took me a second. Do I need to turn over the Joker card? No, no. <laughs> Yes, I'm fine. Okay. Well, how are you right now, buddy? I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. We're hunkered down in our basements. Uh, okay. I get first things yeah. I'm asking all my guests. First question out: How are you doing in quarantine? Uh, what are you binge watching? How are you hanging in there? And are you making sourdough bread? Uh, we tried the bread thing a while ago, but we didn't do the sourdough thing right in the fridge. You're supposed to let it grow, but we didn't. We right. screwed it up. So that. <laughs> and then uh, Connecticut, thankfully, luckily, you know, keep your fingers crossed. We're like one of the lowest transmission rates in the whole country. Uh, I think we're like down to 0.03%. And, you know, knock on wood, we haven't had any fatalities in the last four days. So we're doing pretty good uh, COVID-wise. I mean, you, you know, we go out and about. We wear our masks. You know, we're all – we're safety. See, I got my mask right here. Just in case. Mine is Marvel. I've got a Marvel mask. I have a I Marvel mean, like, Do you got <laughs> I do. Why don't you have a Terrificon mask, though? Know, That's you can the, get the those marketing. Now. You could get those. You can get print them up with Terrificon. And don't laugh. when Before I had to pull the plug on this, in May, I was looking into printing up uh, thousands of surgical masks with the Terrificon logo on it. Uh, and that what happened to that? Well, you just can't have a large assembly right now. For No, no, no. What happened to... No, I get that. What happened to masks? Oh, I was going to say, well, there's a thing called the pandemic, Joe. No, no, no. I know, I'm not there. I'm not with you right now. <laughs> Physically. Why didn't order them That's all? why we're doing this. <laughs> why? We, we, oh, I thought you just wanted to like check No, out. it's Terrificon at home. That's what we're doing. <laughs> it's Terrificon at home. I'm bringing it to the masses. It's, it's, it's my head's swimming right now, Joe. Uh yeah. It's the mold fumes from the comic book. <laughs> You're in the basement. Why, yeah. why no, I, I make, want the mask. Why didn't I make the masks? Yeah. Because I don't know. I'm hoping next August or July 30th to the August 1st, 2021, we might not need such a thing. But, you know, we'll find out next year what's going to happen. I want mine now. I want my Trificon mask now because well, I'm going to wear it everywhere and I'm going to wear it with pride. Um, like, I know you're keep. I know, <laughs> I know you're keeping busy in quarantine. Uh, for yeah. those that don't know... Uh, we there's a new YouTube smash hit Sensation television hit yeah. series, yes, called Mitch and Ed's Excellent Adventure. Uh, with myself and my podcasting buddy for the last almost 13 years, you know him and love him as well, Ed Dollister, all the way from Australia. And every two weeks, Ed and I jump on the pop culture train and we talk about everything from movies, TV, toys, and more for about an hour as much as we can do without just you know killing each other and it's been pretty fun we've done about 15 shows already and uh you're covering everything i think you've covered muppets you've covered superman the movie obviously yeah. raiders of the lost ark um raiders, there's muppets, been a ton of stuff uh, and i think if pe depending on people listen to this right now i think ed is scarfing down some eight-year-old cereal. No, it was older than that. It was, we had a joke going. Um, it was 2000, oh, it was 12-year-old. Uh, was yeah, it 12-year-old cereal? 12-year-old cereal, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. If, if we had a, when we had 100 subscribers, Ed was going to open up a box of uh, Indiana Jones and Crystal Skull cereal. Yes. We gave him in 2008. And he opened it live on camera on Saturday. We just filmed it and he ate it. So if you want to see what happens to a man, who eats 12 year old cereal live on camera. Yeah. Is so, he okay? I think he is. Yeah, he's okay. He okay. did get a little green in the show. You could actually <laughs> see him start to pause and stop. And then he got a little queasy about it, but he's okay. You mentioned a, an aftertaste, which scared me a little bit. Now, if you get to 250 subscribers. Right here. What, yeah. My Batman cereal from 1989 with the Michael Keaton bank still attached. Shrink wrap, never open, made by the Ralston Purina Company, makers of can, fine dog food. Can you why. can you shake it? Yeah. Is it is it solid or is it still oh, in part of moving around in it? There's okay. Stuff. It's I didn't realize it's another entire origin of Batman is on the side of the box, <laughs> and it says and now Batman uh, Batman brand cereal, crunchy bat shapes with natural flavors, 
Pundi Not. Discover the delicious adventures awaiting you every day with the new Batman cereal. So 31 years old? 1989. Yes, best used before 1990. So yeah, it is uh, 31 years old. So subscribe to Mitch and Ed's Excellent Adventure on YouTube and you get enough subscribers, you hit 250, you're going to eat that cereal. A spoonful, a bowlful. I'll eat a bowlful. We'll see how I'm the big guy. I like to eat. Um, uh, you'll believe a man could eat old cereal. There you go. Uh, we'll find out. We will find out. I hope to see that. I hope you survive. Um, yeah, COVID has yeah. nothing on 31-year-old cereal, I don't think. Yeah, see, um, okay. If it wasn't for COVID, we wouldn't be eating old cereal right now. <laughs> it's true. Days. It has happened. And unfortunately, this, like, as I've told my listeners, this would be the time of year when we'd be getting together, we'd be meeting together, we'd be having uh, panels, we'd be seeing the legends of the comic book biz, getting our stuff signed and meeting people. Right. It didn't happen. Things are canceled. Out, right. I want to kind of, I want to talk about what was planned, what I'm going to hope to bring a little bit of flavor to the listeners, uh, especially in this episode. And I also want to get some behind the scenes on what it's been like for you to deal with this whole thing, because we see announcements, guest announcements, and then all of a sudden it gets canceled. But there's between you and your team, just putting all this stuff behind the scenes. What have you had to go through just dealing with this over the past few months? Uh, well, at first, there is just a lot of anticipation because you just don't know what's going to happen. You still don't really know, but you just assume it felt like a bad snowstorm here in the Northeast. We have a lot of blizzards and such. So you know that there's a big storm coming. So you get ready for it and you hunker down and you get all your supplies at your house, but then it hits and then you start to clean up and the, the, you know, the digging out process. That's what it seemed like. We thought it was going to hit us in March and by May it should have gone through. We didn't know. I don't know why everyone just assumed it was only going to be like two weeks of this. And, uh, then it got to be three weeks and four weeks and five weeks and two months and three months. So you started to see that this wasn't going to go away lightly like a snowstorm. And then basically I just started getting a little bit cautious and, and heads up to all the uh, guests and say, Hey, you know what? I'll check in with you come end of June and we'll see where we are there. And the, you know, you're watching the news every night and you're seeing the numbers go well down here where we are but up in the rest of the country. And then there's lockdowns and you can't travel and the airlines are all over the place. So I, I've been dealing with this now, June, July, August, for about three months. I pulled the plug on this three months ago. So I knew it wasn't going to happen uh, early June. I think it was late May, early June when we announced it. But it just stinks because you know, well, you, you talk to me all the time. I mean, this is the preparation that starts before the next show happens. I'm already working on the year... I think you take I think you take two weeks off if I'm not mistaken a week or two off maybe. Well, yeah, I get like almost a PTSD thing because when the show right. ends on Sunday, I literally wake up that whole following week like crazy, thinking it's right. still on. It really right. is a weird thing. It takes a while for me to decompress and figure out the show's over because I'm like, oh my god, go pick up Lou Ferrigno at the airport. <laughs> Somebody has to go get, uh, you yeah. know. Sam Jones, he's stuck over in uh, luggage or something. So yeah, all that has to go away. So that's the first week. And then the second week, like you said, is when I start to yeah. realize it's over. And then you start checking out all the, you know, the bills. Then and I start getting texts from you going, how do you, how does this, this sound? What about this person? What about this guy? You think somebody <laughs> want to see this person? Yeah. And then that's like, two weeks after the show. Yeah. That's two weeks. And then we start. So this time, since the show was supposed to be this week, I'm already on next year, but the thing is, I started working on next year back in June. The second I announced that this year was canceled, I started moving everything towards that. And luckily, a lot of the guests that were going to be here this year, and you're talking to a bunch of them, like Susan Eisenberg and uh, uh, George Newburn, he's going to be on the show. They were all coming here to Connecticut as part of the Justice League first ever reunion. Yeah, and we had everybody: Michael Rosenbaum, Kevin Cost, Kevin Costner, Kevin Conroy, <laughs> Phil, Lamar, Phil Lamar, Andrea Romano. Oh yeah, we were going to do a live table read. All that was going to happen, and uh, that's probably much the, the, the biggest disappointment is because I already had that in my head how it was going to look and how the panel was going to go and you know what fans were going to see. But when it doesn't happen. It's that weird phantom feeling like, oh, no, I studied for the exam and school's canceled. What do I do now? 
and uh, I, I'm doing a presentation in front of 300 people and I'm not wearing my clothes or something. You get that weird <laughs> yeah. adrenaline, like you're, you're, you're all pumped up to do something. Like I got to go run the race, but there's no finish line. Right. And so that's what this feels like. This entire experience has, has felt like getting ready for a wedding or, or a big event. And then it just gets canceled at the last minute. You're standing at the altar and uh, there's no place to go. So. But the good news is you're prepped for the next time. Well, yeah, and I think yeah. I do that with interviews too. Like I'll, I'll prepare like a fiend for an interview yeah. and then the guest will have to cancel or postpone and oh, yeah. the adrenaline goes and then you realize, Oh, I don't have to do the preps. Yeah. I'm already ready for the interview. So I just have to fire it up. Right. So um, the, the I think thing, the only thing that gets me is, and, and you could answer this too, because you go to conventions, you were supposed to go to that big Cincinnati one. Or was it Cleveland? About C Cincinnati Comic Expo, Cleveland, Why? Wizard World, Cleveland. Yep. Yep. You start wondering what's going to happen. Because right. I've been saying that too. Because my show, as you mentioned earlier, is mostly comic book uh, creator focus. And we do have celebrities like voiceover actors and such. But I'm not one of those shows that gets the big, you know. Uh, Chris ben Evans, Affleck. Robert Downey Jr. Robert Downey, yeah, yeah. I don't get those big, you know, three, four hundred dollar photo ops. I don't know what those shows are going to be like going forward in the future. Right. They get, you know, hundred thousand, hundred fifty thousand, two hundred thousand attendees. I, that's that's left to be seen. I, I like. I, I see right now. I see virtual, like what we're doing now, yeah. um, like two minutes with, um, you know, Tom Welling, and they'll yeah. charge X amount of dollars and things like that. It's kind of gone into that virtual space. Yeah. Um, but, but, not and I know this was the, no, it's, no not it's not. And I know this was the tricky part for you too, because I think there was a window there yeah. where there was a determination of if it does happen, How are, you gonna do are it? all the pictures going to be looking like we just got out of, you know, yeah, like, uh, you know, the, the, the plague promise. ward at a hospital. Right. Yeah, exactly. Every picture is going to look like, it. do I want to spend a hundred bucks for a picture like that? Yeah. Um, no, that's what I thought. And I started, we yeah. started mapping out me at the, uh, Mohegan sun staff. We started spacing the tables apart for the six foot, you know, barriers. Oh, wow. We had, uh, they still have it at the Mohegan Sun uh, Convention Center. Uh, temperature checks, they have a thermal temperature check. It's kind of like something from Predator where you walk through and it basically reads your temperature. As you oh, walk the through. heat signature or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's really high tech. <laughs> they're, they're doing it in airports too, I wow. saw. Them. So you they, guys really dove into this then, oh, as yeah, far yeah, as yeah. keeping like, if we have to do this, yeah, how, how do we keep it? Oh, wow. Yeah, Mohegan Sun has all the masks and theirs, theirs has logos on it. Theirs has the Mohegan <laughs> logo. But they had masks. We had, uh, what's the stuff? Purell. Station, hand sanitizer, oh, yeah. Sanitizer. I mean, we were really figuring a way out of it. Yeah. But, and, and like I said, the numbers are down significantly here in Connecticut, but you don't want to be that guy. You right. don't want to become typhoid, typhoid Mitch. You know what I mean? It's like, well, <laughs> yes. the numbers were low until he had to have his show. And then we had 30, the super spreader. Yeah. Next thing you know, it's like, a, you know, Marvel two and one here. No, because that we, I was just, um, as we're recording this, I just noticed the band smash mouth yeah. played a concert in Sturgis. And yes. there's, so if that, you know, hopefully nothing comes out of that. I, I thought, uh, the but won't that be what they're known for if something happens? And you don't want to be the person that's known for the super spreader event. So I, yeah, I, totally I saw it. the same thing this weekend on the news. And I said, oh, my goodness, that big motorcycle convention. You go, but, mm -hmm. I, you know, I don't know. I mean, I no, we're glad you're keeping everybody safe because that's one of the things I love about your show is that you are so concerned about the fans and making sure everybody not only has a fun time, but that everybody is relaxed yeah. and that everybody is comfortable. You guys are relaxed. I'm not. <laughs> no, you're not. You're a mess. Oh, you're a hot mess the I'm entire weekend. Mess. And I try to avoid you like the play. Oh, yeah. so. Do not make eye contact. He'll kill you. <laughs> no, no don't, you know what? Don't that? look directly at Mitch during the weekend. <laughs> I thought about this today in the car because it is this week. And I would be right now. I got my haircut. I always get the haircut just before. Yeah, the show. Look good. Got to look good for the, the, the public. But yeah. uh, I was doing the same process that I normally do for the last eight years. I was cleaning the garage this weekend. I had all the bad, I literally found the badges and the lanyards. They were in the garage. I was getting them ready oh. for them. I'm like, there's no show, but I was like Christmas and I'm decorating the tree and there's no Christmas <laughs> coming. And I had everything ready to go. And I got, like I said, I got the haircut, but I started thinking I'm going to miss everybody so much. I would even hug the people I don't like. And believe it or not, <laughs> there's people I don't like. 
like certain vendors. No, shocking. No, certain vendors I happen to deal with are going to get under my skin. But I said, I'd even hug and kiss that guy right now if it's socially acceptable with the oh. whole thing. Well, but, what I want to what I want to focus on is you mentioned about things moving to next year. So I'm sure you had some like already pre thought of 2021 guests. I know. Let can we talk a little bit about what was moving? going to happen yeah. and then what may what may get pushed to 2021? We've talked about the Justice League, which is awesome right. because 2021 is actually the 20th anniversary yes. of the Justice League animated series. So that becomes a bigger event. Right. Uh, I think you and I do the indie cast. Raiders, right. 40, oh, that's right. Raiders, Raiders 40th anniversary. Yeah, we could do that next year. So that all of our buddies. Be, well, I could try to get Karen Allen because she's up the street and my event's earlier now. So yeah. if everything's back to normal, we could have guests and stuff. I'll get her to come on down. To and come our IndyCast buddies can be there. Um, I think Michael Rooker was well, scheduled. You know what? Go back for a second. We were planning on all seeing the Indiana Jones movie next year because... <laughs> they were supposed to film it this year, number five, yes. and it was going to be out next year. So it yes. would have been out in July 10th, right around my birthday, which was great. But the Terrificon, we could have all got together and snuck out to the movie theater and saw Indiana Jones together on the big screen. Yeah, uh. That was one of the things that I had planned that, you know, obviously we're not doing Indy 5 because they're going to do it whenever they can film movies again. Yeah, Indiana but, Jones and the, and the Curse of the Coronavirus. Yeah, right. But some of the other guests that were uh, coming to the show were Sean Gunn was coming back for, I think, the third time. Mm -hmm. And he was bringing his friend, um, oh, the fellow that he co-starred with on Gilmore Girls, Scott, I can't think of his last name right now, Scott Thornton, Thornton, I'm sorry if I can't remember, but he was a voiceover guy in Batman uh, Gotham by Gaslight. But people know okay. him as playing this character named Kirk. And the other guy was Luke. And Luke was the guy that Kirk worked for on the show. If you watch Gilmore Girls, you know who I'm talking about. He was supposed to be there. But Yandu was supposed to be there. And Yandu is yeah, Michael Rooker. Rooker. And Rooker is the guy who I've been trying to get to come to Terrificon for about four or five years. And it never worked because his schedule was always Walking Dead or Guardians of the Galaxy. But this year, we finally coordinated it. Last year, I had it all set. And he was supposed to be here this August. 2021? 2021. Yeah, I already talked to his uh, people. Okay. That we said, can we get this guy next year? They're like, yeah. So, okay. And by the way, you have me running panels there. Yeah, I can yeah. tell you uh, for Rooker's panel, I would probably introduce him and then leave because Rooker oh, yeah, jumps yeah. off the stage and runs into the crowd the yeah. entire panel. Yeah, no, no, but uh, yeah, that He's was amazing. To, I'm trying to think of who else was supposed to be there. Oh, Nicholas Hammond from australia speaking of that that animation. one that one hurt my heart a little bit because uh, yeah. look you know me in the spider-man tv series he's been on comic book central yep. that was a special place in my heart with that series and when i and he's very difficult because he's in australia so it's almost australia. like trying to get ed dollis to, yeah, to, yeah, to get yeah. the schedules to line up and you I had nicholas coming i was coordinating his airline flight back in january yeah 2021 yeah, yeah, that's the plan. But the, that's okay. the thing too, because when this first and, started, we were like, whoa, what's going to happen with the airline flights? And something else a little near and dear to my heart, and I don't know if we can say this and, or not. So I'm going to just, I'm out. going to uh, put out a sound effect, and you can pick up whether or not we can say something about it. All right, go ahead. Na, 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 na. Well, yeah, he was supposed to be here, Mr. Lee Majors, because he wanted to see what his uh, filming schedule was going to be like. Okay. And that was back in January. And they said, well, you're going to have to wait a couple months because I think he was doing something maybe with the Hallmark Channel. Yeah. But yeah. All, this, all the shooting production schedules are all out the window right now. So I don't know what's going on, but hopefully we can get everything back on course next year because I was going to have the bionic reunion oh. uh, with Lindsay Wagner and <laughs> Lee Majors. Too, so. You're breaking my heart. It's like oh, I – Both, man. Every, oh, and I you know. know. See there? Speaking of S.H.I.E.L.D., this week's the last episode of S.H.I.E.L.D., and guess who mm -hmm. was going to be here? Ming Now Wei. I Ming Now Wen? You. I'm sorry, Ming Now Wen. That was supposed to be my big surprise guest. She was going to be here. Uh, well, she's on Comic Book Central. Well, she was going to be on Terrificon. A couple of times. So that could be part of Terrificon at home. She was working on Henry's that was in. That's new information to me. You didn't tell me about that. Because so now... I never got it all filled out. I had the contracts. I was going back and forth with the agent. I was like, okay. 
So she, so Terrificon at Home begins a few days earlier now because Ming Na Wen will be on the show this week. Uh, well, so there you go. And I was playing on her, and I was trying to get Henry Simmons, who's from oh, Connecticut, who plays also on Comic Book Central. Yeah. Oh. Uh, oh, happened. I got a gift from Zoom, so we went. We uh, we're good with a forty minutes. I just saw that at my end too, and said, "Hey, you have an extra couple minutes." Okay, so we'll um, use them constructively. We will use them constructively. <laughs> it's all new to me. It's all new with the Zoom. Um, okay, so 2021, how can people, so we know what is on tap for 2021. Yeah. We're looking at that. We see the dates right behind you there. Um, so for, how can people find out more about it? How can they keep up with what's going on COVID-wise, what's going on guest-wise, and what's going on in the mind of Mitch? Oh, well, the mind of Mitch is easy because I'm all over the place. Like you mentioned earlier, Ed and I are on every other week with uh, Mitch and Ed's Excellent Adventure. We're on the IndieCast podcast. I'm doing a podcast every two weeks with my friend Jerry Ordway, which is called the Power Cosmic Podcast, which is all about comics. And in fact, if you listen to the Power Cosmic, that's where I give out most of my hints for the show because oh, okay. lots of times it comes on the show out of the moment. We just think, make it up as we go. Jerry will say, hey, you know, this comic book's coming up on its uh, 20 or 40th anniversary you should get the creative team behind it. And I go, oh yeah, that's a great idea. So I'll start making phone calls and Jerry will call some of his friends and that's how we get a lot of the creator guests. And you, you literally hear the start of it right there on the, the uh, podcast. So if you follow me on those uh, shows, you'll hear the plans. The website, I'll start announcing guests in January. That's what I normally do right after Christmas. I come back and I start posting one at a time. First I do the... Uh, actors a little bit then i do the artists then we go back into actors i do like every week i do a batch of yes just to keep you coming back and teasing you so that's going to start up in january tickets go on sale uh this fall for next year i didn't raise the price of the tickets everything's the same nice as it was night. this year and uh yeah i mean we're just waiting and see because i mean you're a big football fan I, my son plays university of maryland band we're waiting to hear what's going to happen with all that stuff. Yeah. It's, it's changing daily. Uh, we're just going to no. keep an eye on things, but we're going to hope that everything yeah. works out for next year, uh, that we can all get together again, our IndyCast buddies, all these, uh, the Justice League reunion, uh, Rooker and everybody. Um, my goodness, Mitch, I, I've said it a million times on the show. People that listen to the Trivicon episodes know, I've said it every time. You do conventions bigger and better each year. Thanks, I think because of everything that's happened, I think you're going to pull out all the stops next year. There's so many anniversaries. There's so many things going on. We, uh, you know what? I've seen I can't wait. Of, you know, Facebook, how they do those Facebook memories. Yeah. You know, say, hey, last year or two years ago, you guys did right. this. And this is the time of year that we would normally all get together. So every day when I wake up, I got Facebook in my face telling me, Hey, four years ago, you guys did this. And three years ago, last year, did I got this. all those. Yeah. But it's not just me. It's a lot of the attendees and a lot of the guests are getting mm -hmm. that as well. So I've been seeing people sharing it or they'll tag my name in it and they'll say, Hey, this came up today. Can't wait to see yeah. you next year in 2021, Mitch, or had a great time in 2018 or 2019 or 2017. And it just shows all the different moments that people have had over the years of the shows. And honestly, that's kind of lessened the blow of the show not being there this year. Cause it's, it's been, I'm not going to lie to you. It's really depressing not having a terrific con cause it's my job. It's like going to the North pole on December 24th and telling Santa there's no Santa or Christmas mm -hmm. this year. It's the year. If this was a rask, Ranking and bass thing, it would be the year without a terrific con. And we'd all be <laughs> oh, the stop motion. Yeah. The yeah, stop yeah, motion but, yeah. Yeah. It's the year without a terrific. <laughs> no, con. we, we were going to, we build a little vacation around it too. And we come down yeah. and we have fun and we get to see people that I only get to see maybe once a year, you know, like yeah. Laird and Ron and, and, and Keith and Ed and everybody. No, so but it's, um, nice. it's nice seeing people sending me notes and letters and photographs saying how much fun they've had in the show past. And they all end it with, but I can't wait till next year because it's going to yeah. be bigger and better than ever before. It's going to be the best one you ever did. So you, you've just got that, that faith that people are having in the show and then the, the camaraderie and, you know, the expectation. So, Hey man, it might be better than I could over, ever imagine just because of the, the, the good, what's the word I'm looking for? The good feelings, the, the spirit that everyone seems to have. It'll just like come together and just make something magical. There, happen. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's the thing. It's, you know, we, we missed out on something that yeah. we enjoy 
And but I think that anticipation, that that waiting, is going to yeah. make it even better. And like I said, you, some of these anniversaries are coming in together. Yep, I yep. think you're going to do it bigger and better. I think the panels All are going to be amazing. A, there's an 80th anniversary next year from somebody that, if you just looked around this room, you could tell who I'm a big fan of. Think about it. <laughs> yeah. 1941. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. You're a star-spangled guy. Well, there's that. And then there's also uh, an amazing Amazon that's having an 80th anniversary next year, too. So we want to say Susan Eisenberg is going to be there. So you're going to get to see Wonder Woman, but yeah. you're also going to get to see somebody else celebrating an 80th anniversary, I think, too. Mm, Captain America. Mm, Captain wonder America, if... Wonder Woman. I know. You can't get more patriotic than that. I'm trying I, to... that's, the, that's the teaser. So we'll leave it with Captain America. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Ooh. All right. We're going to look for 80th anniversary of Captain America. Mitch, right. stay safe, my friend. Stay nerdy. Uh, keep on keeping on. Yeah. And uh, looking forward to uh, bigger and better things in 2021. All right. You too, Joe. You take care. And thanks for doing all this stuff for Comic Book Central. It's keeping me alive. Like comic books come to life. It's keeping my comic book fandom alive. So thanks. Keep doing it, buddy.